Hiya, my name's John, and over the last few weeks I've been trying to write the stinkiest poem I can. And I've picked up a few tips, and I'm going to share them with you in the hope that you'll take them and use them to write the whiffiest poems imaginable. We've got loads of words to describe how something looks. Words like red or shiny or round. And we've got loads of words to describe how something sounds, like jingling or screeching. And we've even got lots of words to describe how things feel, like smooth or bristly or rough or sticky. But we've got almost no words to describe how something smells. And this means that if you want to talk about smells, if you want to write about smells, you've got to compare them to something. Now, you could compare a smell to another smell, you could say the smell of the soap is like the smell of the roses or whatever. But it can be more effective to compare a smell to um, another of your senses. To describe a smell in terms of another of your senses. You might say, for instance, that lemon, the smell of lemons is sharp, like the edge of a knife. You might say the smell of the sea is prickly or bristly, like the hair on the back of a cat. Smells are more involved than our other senses with memory and emotion. So you might think about how a particular smell makes you feel, what a particular smell reminds you of. Are there any smells which remind you of home or school or holidays, for instance? Are there any particular smells which make you happy or sad or upset? Think about the smells of different times of year. It's beautiful summer now, but think about the smells of bonfire night. The smell of the ash in the air. The gunpowder from the fireworks going off. The smell of the leaves on the bonfire. And the food, the smell of onions roasting on the hot dogs and uh, such like. And then think of the smells of Christmas or Diwali or any other festival, any other festival associated with a time of year. What are the smells of the food round then? The smell of Christmas trees, to me, that's uh, one of the strongest smells I know. Just thinking about it, I can bring it straight to mind. Now, some animals have a superhuman sense of smell. The shark, it can smell a single drop of blood in the water, a mile away, and that's underwater. I was thinking about what would it be like to have a sense of smell like that? What would be the, the disadvantages of it? What would be the downsides? I love the smell of bacon frying in a pan. And one way for me to get into writing about smell is to think about the smells of food and the smells of my favourite food and the smells of the food I don't like as well. For some reason I absolutely can't stand the smell of bananas in a cake or in a pie or something like that. Baking in the oven, that uh, it drives me mad, it drives me up the wall. Are there any smells of food that you really object to? Uh, are there any smells of food which mean different things to you? Is there, are there smells that you associate with school dinners? Imagine you're coming up with a potion and you're trying to make it the stinkiest potion you can. What would you stir into that? What different ingredients would you put in if you wanted to make something that, in combination, would be the most foul-smelling thing imaginable? And what would you do with the potion once you had it?